Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and in this video I'm going to show you how to solve crossing over problems. This type of problems usually gives a headache to many students but I hope that after my explanation today you would be able to solve this uh, type of problems easily. So first uh, let me read the problem given the crossover or recombinant frequency of each of the genes on the chart construct a chromosome or uh, we have to construct order of the genes on the chromosome. But first let me give you some theory. So imagine we have chromosome number one and of course in diploid organism each chromosome is represented uh, by two uh, homologs, uh, homologous uh, chromosome. Uh, one we got from one parent, another from another parent. So let's say this is chromosome number one and we would have two uh, copies but uh, this is not identical copies. One we got from one parent, another from another parent and they can be slightly different. That's why I'm showing them in different colors. And during meiosis one each chromosome would make a copy of itself and we call such um, identical copies which I am showing here with the same color sister chromatids. So here is the sister chromatids and here is the sister chromatids. But this is going to be homologous chromosomes and uh, those which shown with the same color would be identical copies and uh, those uh, which shown with different colors would be just homologous chromosomes and not identical. And crossing over in, the, in such um, structure which we call tetrosome happens between non-sister chromatids. So let's say we have gene A somewhere here, dominant gene A and homologous chromosome at the same locus may have a slightly different version of the same gene, let's say recessive uh, variant and let's say here this chromosome or chromatid would have say gene B and here we would have recessive version of the same gene so small b. And the greater distance between two genes the more chances that crossing over may happen between gene A and B. And if we'll place say another gene here, gene C, you see the chances that uh, crossing over would happen between gene A and C is much smaller than between A and B. And this is uh, a theory how we can find order of the genes just by knowing uh, frequency of the crossing over that might happen. Just keeping in mind that the closer two genes the least frequency of the cr crossing over, the farther apart the two genes uh, then crossing over frequency would also increase. But you have to keep in mind that crossing over frequency cannot exceed 50%. This is maximum. Crossing over cannot be like guaranteed uh, and be more than 50% like 90% or 100% because uh, as you see this gene B may uh, change places with this recessive uh, allele if crossing over happens anywhere here or it can stay here. So just two variants whether it can go here or stay here, no any other variants. That's why 50% crossing over between two genes would be maximum. And actually 50% uh, would represent independent assortment when genes are on the non-homologous chromosomes. When genes on the same uh, chromosome usually we will find number that is uh, slightly less than 50%. But this is theoretical maximum. So now when we know this information we can easily build uh, order of the genes on the chromosome. Rule number one 
uh, we have to find a pair of genes with maximum frequency of the crossing over and this is genes P and C as you see 45 percent very close to 50 percent which means that uh, genes B and C very far from each other. This is going to be first step and let's place for example gene B here and gene C here and we have 45 centimorgans between them. So uh, centimorgans actually reflect um, frequency of the crossing over between two genes. Now let's uh, with second step find another pair of the genes with uh, second place of the crossing over frequency and this is genes P and D. Can we say put um, D here? Not. Take a look. We have 45 here. If we will put 40, we are going to get 85. This is not possible because 50% crossing over is maximum frequency. So we have to put gene D somewhere here. So this is going to be a location of the gene D and frequency of the crossing over is going to be 40% or 40 centimorgans between gene B and D. And we also can say that between gene D and C, we would have 5% of the crossing over or 5 uh, centimorgans. So next would be 30% frequency of the crossing over between gene A and C. Can we put gene A somewhere here? That means to this 45% we have to add another uh, 30. 45 plus 30 would be 75. Again, we cannot go over 50. That means that we have to put gene A uh, in this direction. So 30 means that we have to count 30 from this place to somewhere here. So let's say it's going to be somewhere, somewhere here. We can put gene A here. And between gene A and C, we have 30 centimorgans. We also can say that uh, that means that between gene A and B, we would have 15 centimorgans. Between gene A and D, we are going to have, so let's calculate here at the flanks, we have 15 and 5, which give us 20, 45 minus 20, that give us this fragment 25. So 25 centimorgans. Now let's see, we have one, one pair of genes, gene A and D, with the frequency of the crossing over between them 25%. So between A and D, we have 25 centimorgans. A and D, according to our plan, uh, also uh, have 25 centimorgans. So as you see, this is very easy. We cannot place no gene A, no D anywhere outside because we would exceed this number of uh, crossing over frequencies between uh, genes. So we can put them only inside. We can place gene D and A only in this places. So this is going to be uh, the order of genes on this chromosome. And this is 
all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.